back in September, this lady rejects this guy who apparently wants her phone, but then somehow he gets hit in the head with a brick, and the guy's an Uber driver. Yeah, I knew that there was a lot about this story when it originally broke a few months ago that did not make sense, so I figured I would leave this one alone, but here we are talking about it now because, well, apparently this has turned out to be an, a hoax, but it's not just the fact that it's a hoax. It's the fact that now this woman right here is pretty much a fugitive. Police headquarters today, we got alerted earlier today um, that Miss Osmond, that brick lady, was planning to surrender and turn herself in because she's wanted for theft in Harris County. Uh, we were re uh, contacted by the new Black Panther Nation and Quanell X because uh, he was contacted by her for help and to arrange the surrender. So it was our understanding that that was supposed to happen at 345 today. You can see right now it's that time has passed. And as we arrived here at Houston Police Headquarters today, we got another alert that Miss Osmond, Brick Lady, is a no-show. She decided to not surrender. I spoke with Candace Matthews, part of the New Black Panther uh, uh, Nation, and she told me that they had an agreed meeting location today. They were supposed to be uh, meeting with Brick Lady and then bringing her here for the surrender at Houston Police Headquarters, but they say she didn't show up. She didn't Okay, I'm gonna need some of y'all to take a real deep breath right now. <sighs> she lied. It is okay to say when someone tells a lie, that they have lied. I know on the internet, nobody wants to be wrong and everybody wants to appear like they're infallible, but we're doing that she to lied. get views when it comes to her now catching charges because she took over $40,000 from hardworking people for another lie that she came up with. I never actually covered this story because quite frankly, I had a feeling that this story would probably come back around. It would kind of like have a bit of a a boomerang effect but as you guys can see obviously there is another race hoax going on which really to tell you the truth uh shouldn't surprise anyone given the fact that the brick lady was how do i say this she was snuffed out shortly after the whole incident occurred and of course she does in fact have simps but don't worry we will get to those simps here in a second but uh this right here is the brick lady right here slapping a guy shaking her butt and of course there's this other one of her using the money or using some of the money that she had taken from others fraudulently um, after setting up GoFundMe pages in uh, Jamaica. Solo trip. Amazing stuff. So this lady right here, and I'll play a little bit for you guys, a little bit more here in a second. Uh, this lady who's been called uh, the brick lady. She claims she got nailed in the face with a brick. Now, the wound actually looks pretty bad. The guy who apparently nailed her with a brick actually apparently hit her in self-defense with a water bottle, which is very, very strange. So, yes, the wound definitely does look a little bit inconsistent. However, the reason why she is in trouble, again, is because police didn't exactly go for her story. And apparently the GoFundMe that she set up, apparently the money itself is fraudulent, meaning that she defrauded people out of their cash. And it doesn't exactly jive with the police report and what the security, uh, what the surveillance camera had to say about the situation. But before we get there, let's go ahead and go back in time to how this person got viral. Just hit me in my face with a brick and all these black men just watch and they don't give a yeah, this man, this man hit me, it, grabbed a rock, and it hit me in my face because I would have given him my number. And it. all y'all just watch. What you y'all see that shit? What have I ever done to any? Now, guys, this story right here, it went viral. It absolutely took off. I want to say it was back in September or October time frame when it took off and people uh, were in shock and they were saying stuff like, oh, my God, she got nailed in the face, which getting hit with a brick would make me automatically think that maybe she died. Maybe she's got a, a head made of cast iron. I really and truly don't know. I mean, especially getting hit in the face like that with one. I mean, I just can't see myself getting up from that. But still at the same time, the thing about this situation is that it then immediately led to a bunch of internet detectives going out there, mostly on TikTok. One of them, I think, was Rama Army, uh, who decided to dig into the woman's past, and this she is what she found. got hit in the face with a brick because she wouldn't give a man her number. Me and my team just uncovered years of her getting mysteriously injured and then asking for money after. In 2020, she claimed she got beat up, 
garnered almost $5,000. This is taken from her Facebook page, May 2022. Claims that she's injured and very subtly, not so subtly, says she needs money for her son's birthday. Literally one month later, she's seen asking for money again to fund a research project she's doing. Jump to February 2023. Here she is claiming she experienced violence at the hands of a white woman. One month later, claiming more hardships and trauma. Fast forward to now, she has garnered $50,000. I am so pissed right now. That lady with a brick lied. Sat up there and lied on men. Thanks to these unqualified and freelanced investigators and researchers on TikTok and YouTube, we now know the truth. If you go to this man's YouTube right now, he lays out all the facts. And check out these reputable websites. BX is reporting on it. This highly respected news website, LipstickAlley.com, and this random Reddit poster have taken the time in between job searches to research this extensively and have discovered that this is a... So basically, she's a lifelong scammer. She's been scamming people for a very long time, taking their money. But still, at the same time, somebody's probably going to say, well, that doesn't exactly explain how the world she got hit in the face. We'll get to that here in a second. But the thing is this right here. People like this, they do this because they've never been held accountable in life. They've never actually been spanked or disciplined or anything like that. And that right there is the reason why these people get away with it. As you guys could obviously uh, hear at the very beginning, you've got a lot of people saying it's okay to admit that you made a mistake. It's okay that you to admit that you actually fell for this. It does, in fact, happen. Some people do fall for this crap. Like, I remember when the whole Juicy Smoulier thing broke. It seemed very real until you realized that it was pretty obvious that Juicy was, in fact, lying. Most of these uh, things are, in fact, actual hoaxes, okay? They take advantage of a media that's going to suddenly pump the narrative for them. Maybe this girl thought that she could get some national attention. Who the hell knows? But then again, though, the internet does, in fact, live forever. Which, of course, leads us to the responses after everybody out there had called the people out for, uh, let's just say, investigating the person. And, of course, they went after her. And then eventually it came out that it was, in fact, a hoax. Let's just say that some of those same internet detectives, they had something to say about this. Justice is finally being served for Miss Brick Lady. Where's all y'all girls at? I already asked y'all where y'all was at before, but I want to know where y'all at right now. Because I just do not like how hard y'all went and caused the gender war that was so unnecessary over a woman who was lying in your face. You didn't ask for no detail. You ain't ask for nothing. I want to know where all these big creators who was stitching everybody, playing only half of people's videos just so that they could come in and add their bogus take. Where's y'all at? Right? Y'all was going so hard about this lady. Y'all was taking up for this lady like she was your first cousin. Where are you at? You can't just brush over this and act like the people wasn't right. The people who was asking more questions. The people who was hesitant to believe her because of her past and her being somebody who has done this before. Right? All of that and y'all was still so easy to believe her. This is why y'all get easily manipulated in y'all everyday life, right? Because you're too simple. You believe anything people tell you, right? That's why I wait for stuff to play out. But a lot of y'all don't. And that's the reason why y'all end up being loud and wrong in y'all takes. I want to see y'all be just as loud as y'all was when y'all was stitching creators and throwing them under the bus simply because they wanted more details and more information. I want you to be just as loud as you was when you was doing that to get views when it comes to her now catching charges because she took over $40,000 from hardworking people for another lie. God is good. Thank you. I want an apology for what y'all did to me when I called out the brick lady and I want it now. If you remember this woman, you just Google the brick lady. She's the woman who said she got hit by a brick in the face by a man and a bunch of black men just stood there and watched. She released these black men's faces all over the internet. These men got doxxed. It was a huge ordeal. After months and months of having the internet go after men and their masculinity and how they'll just stand around and watch a woman get hit in the face, guess who's been arrested for, can you guess it, for scamming y'all, for lying. Not only did this woman not get hit in the face with a fucking brick, she actually was seen on camera physically assaulting a man in the face with an unknown object. 
probably the brick. Not to mention, just as I called out, this woman has a long history of just hate crimes happening to her and her just happening to get money for it. All fucking summer last summer, you guys were calling me racist, saying that I needed to keep my nose out of black people's business, that the only reason why I was going after her is because I'm a mis- Now, that little clip went on a little bit longer than it probably needed to, but I definitely wanted to put those two in there, especially given the fact that, uh, and I don't really know who Roma is. I, I've heard that she was a female men's activist. Uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, the only thing I know about her is a video that was released by another content creator a long time ago uh, critiquing her, but she didn't seem that bad in the critique to me. But then again, I've never really watched her channel, so I really, really don't know. And of course, the other lady, she went to TikTok, and obviously a lot of people have gone to TikTok to say, hey, look, you know, it's pretty obvious that this woman here was full of crap, and she had a history of being full of crap. And of course, she had a history of defrauding people, which is exactly the real reason why it is that the cops are trying to bring her in. The thing is this right here, the situation to me, when it first broke back in September, I remember a lot of people talking about this, it just didn't make any sense. So you mean that an Uber driver drove by you, threw a brick at you, but he threw a brick at you after you had refused to give him your phone number and a bunch of other men who, by the way, just decided not to step in on your behalf. Of course, I'm pretty sure that these men realized that stepping in on the behalf of a a woman that, quite frankly, belongs to the streets, uh, another one of those 304s, I'm pretty sure that they did not want to do this because they probably felt there was some trouble going on there. I mean, right off the bat, it didn't look to me like a situation that made a whole lot of sense. And believe it or not, I have been a bouncer before at a couple of bars, and I have seen some situations like this. I've also seen where people will scream the... <laughs> They'll scream, uh, I've just been arred, when in reality, the person that they were their claim did that uh, didn't even show up that night. I've seen a lot of things working in the bar or at the club. I've seen a lot of things outside the club uh, in, my, uh, in my life. And the thing is, this right here, this right here was a situation that just read like it didn't make sense from the start. But apparently the cops are now involved, and apparently the cops are trying to lock her up. Let's go ahead and look at this news report. And then the person that was accused... Uh, let's just say he had some things to say about this as well. Let's go ahead and roll this first part. Who claimed a man threw a brick at her head because she would not give him her phone number is now wanted by Houston police. This story got national attention after that woman live streamed what she claimed was the aftermath on Instagram and started a GoFundMe. Only KPRC 2's Bryce Newberry is talking with the prosecutor on this case tonight. He joins us live near the Galleria with the latest, Bryce. Daniela, Houston police got called to this street in September, and when they arrived, the woman seen in that viral video told them that an Uber driver threw a brick at her head and then tried to kidnap her. But tonight, she has become the focus of this, this criminal investigation because Houston police say the surveillance footage captured by cameras on this street doesn't match her story. Yo, this man just hit me in my face with a brick and all these black men just watch. This video with more than a million likes on the Shade Room's Instagram page captured the moments after what appeared to be a brutal attack in West Houston. Y'all gonna let a man hit me in my face. The woman is 33-year-old Rhoda Osman. What have I ever done to anybody in my life to deserve this? Seen here in tears in a hospital gown. She told the detective that responded that she was hit in the head with a brick after she refused to give her phone number to a guy on the street. And was that verified by any of the evidence that detectives looked at? No. I think what really happened was that those guys out there, they just weren't interested in, I don't know, getting involved with the 304. I mean, they probably thought she was trouble, and now we're finding out, in fact, that she is, in fact, trouble. I love how it is that the cops just straight up said no. Like, it, it just, to, 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 to me, that right there, just the, the facial expression, the body language just, just screams that uh, we tried and we tried and we tried and we tried and we tried to try to find to see if her story made any sense at all or if it was even logical. Uh, and it just looked to me like they were like, yeah, this woman right here is clearly lying. I think we got ourselves a juicy smoothie situation going on right here. Uh, and maybe uh, maybe we need to bring her in. Then not to mention the fact that she apparently scammed people out of over 40,000 bucks and people decide they want to donate to her. And of course, she's got an army of online sense. But we'll get to the simp last because this guy right here had some of the... <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get to him in a second. The thing about this is, like I said before, now the woman is a fugitive. 
Now, like I said, there's something about this that doesn't make any sense to me. Like the woman getting hit in the face with a brick. I mean, how it swole up that fast, I'm not too sure. I've never seen somebody get hit in the face with a brick. But wouldn't you think if you got nailed in the face with a brick, you would probably be down, out, and unconscious? I'm not doubting she didn't get hit. I'm not doubting she did not get hit by something or maybe like, I don't know, maybe uh, injure her face somehow. Water bottle, of course, seems a little bit too inconsistent to me, but the mere fact that she chose to defraud people through her GoFundMe page and she had a reputation for it, it could be one of those situations where this woman is simply paying for a lot of crap that she's done uh, in her past. And of course, she got caught doing it again. I'm not trying to say this is karma or anything, but a lot of the situation just doesn't make any sense, not one single bit. But let's let the guy who apparently is under scrutiny now, let's let him explain what's actually going on here. First interview. This was a well thought of plan, a diabolical plan. Olin Douglas is a father, son, and small business owner. But in September, allegations made by 33-year-old Rhoda Osman nearly put it all at risk. It caused people who I thought really knew me to kind of betray me. Douglas says he met her at a club near the Galleria as she wore a mask that only revealed her eyes. He invited her to an after party. It's as if she was trying to get in some type of conflict. But says she was aggressive and very intoxicated. They ended up in a car with friends. She physically didn't start touching me until I asked her to leave. So you got to get out. Outside the car, Houston police say surveillance video then showed Osman slapping him in the face before he hit her back with what appears to be a plastic water bottle in hand. You should never hit a woman in general, but I didn't want to hit her, actually. It was like she hit me and I just reacted. According to court documents, the footage didn't match what Osman told police, that a male Uber driver threw a brick at her and tried to kidnap her, that she did her own investigation and was told that Douglas was the one who assaulted her. She's now charged with theft because prosecutors say she made it up and tried to profit from this GoFundMe that raised more than $42,000. It's been a divide between, you know, black men, black women, and, and it's been... It's, 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 it's really evil what she did. If police didn't have this surveillance video, this evidence that basically clears you, what kind of situation do you think you would be in? I would be that guy that hit a girl with a brick. I'm black. I'm surprised I didn't get arrested in 30 seconds from this going out. Douglas says he's received death threats from complete strangers. She's just manipulating people using their pain and that is should be the true crime here he hopes people online now, here's the thing about some of the stuff that he said to me it still doesn't make any sense okay i'm still trying to figure out how her wound was the way it was i mean I, but at the same time though when she said she got nailed with a brick i'm just thinking you know maybe if you got nailed with a brick because if, if somebody threw a brick at you I mean, I understand that if you take a brick and you swing it and you actually hit somebody with it, you're probably going to kill them, especially if you're in the back of the head. But for somebody throwing a brick with a little bit of force, that just to me screams that you would not swell up as fast as you did. Please, if you're somebody in the medical field, please comment below. I really interested want to hear your thoughts on this. It's just my thinking right now. But a lot of this just didn't make any sense from the start, especially when I heard the story. As a matter of fact, it was just too confusing. I'm beginning to get a little bit confused right now even talking about it. But still, though, even after that, you chose to put up a GoFundMe page where you actually had a history of defrauding people long before this incident. You go on this trip to Jamaica or whatever, which I'm guessing she paid for with that. But then you get caught defrauding and now you want to take off, which, by the way, also leaves more questions than answers because let's just go ahead and be honest. Uh, if you're innocent, you would not be running. You would not be trying to hide. But let's let one of her simps tell us all that we are. Woman known as Brick Lady charged in Houston after being accused of making the whole thing up, raising 42000 So nobody read the article though, huh? Consciously, when are you going to apologize because that little heifer was scamming? I told you she was scamming. She was lying. When are you going to apologize? The apology better be as loud as the support for her too. And I am pretty sure that what you're about to hit us with is some type of, I don't know, racist gobbledygook or some crap like that. And get into what the article proves and disproves. Let's state the obvious. A lot of y'all don't have as much hope and legitimacy into the system or the legal process until it's about disproving support of a black woman. Then all of a sudden, y'all be. 
called it. Because his victim lied about the details in which how it happened. The article proves that she was assaulted, but that she did not give the correct details about how it happened. According to charging documents, Osman and Douglas were in an argument and Douglas reportedly swung his right hand while holding what appeared to be a plastic bottle and struck Osman in the face. Now, why is the headline written in the way to presume she made the whole thing up when the article itself states that she was assaulted, but that she allegedly lied about how she was assaulted? So for the people in the back, the reason why she's being charged with fraud is because law enforcement has said, no, you were assaulted, but you lying about how you said she was assaulted. Therefore, all the money you raised is fraud. It's just sad to see guys get accused of things that, quite frankly, may not even be real. And, and, and like you said at the very, very end, uh, the Internet is not real. It, well, it's real to some people. Of course, there are people out there who make their living on the Internet, but still at the exact same time. It, it, yeah, so some people need to understand that hoaxes do, in fact, exist. And not every single take that's thrown out there on X or Twitter is absolutely, how do I say, absolutely 100 or absolutely legit. So my man does have a very good point right there at the end. Just remember, that there's some people, especially when you're out there on the platforms like Twitter and Facebook, the Internet is not real. But at the same time, though, it's also forever. So just keep that in mind. Well, you do need to be detailed when you talk to the cops. You do need to make sure that you've actually got your story correct. It's part of the reason why it is that sometimes police officers will say, look, do you want to come back in tomorrow and re-update your statement, or do you want to come back in tomorrow and give us a better clarification? Because normally when something happens, the person is absolutely hysterical, and uh, everything that's going on, they may not remember certain events, or they may give the officers a narrative to kind of better suit things. The fact of the matter is this right here. Uh, this lady right here, number one, it looks like she was lying about the entire ordeal, or at least she's leaving some very, very key things out. Uh, number two, uh, she is running a GoFundMe page where she's actually defrauding people out of money. And uh, finally, to go on top of this, you've got a man who, quite frankly, is being accused. He's also gone to the news media for this right here. And it looks like he has been vindicated. And it looks like this entire thing has turned into a great big giant hoax. There are other videos on the platform that have discussed this. I just now got to this one here. And while there are some things about this entire situation that don't make any sense, like, for example, I don't see how the hell a water bottle could have caused a wound that big. But then again, though, please, if you're in the medical field, please comment, okay? If I've got something wrong, please say something. But still, the thing is this right here. When you talk to the cops, you got to be up front. You got to be detailed. You got to be detail-oriented. You can't leave things out. And also something else, too, when the cops want to talk to you or if they're about to come and get you, you can't just up and take off running, okay? Especially if they've caught you defrauding somebody because then it just looks like you are lying and, of course, you look dishonest. And, of course, this right here gives the cops more incentive to charge you to the fullest extent. So, no, I don't believe any of this woman's story. And it looks like, once again, it's just been another hoax. Something else, too, that you have to consider about police reports and talking to the cops, you, know, you have to be as detailed as possible. Police officers understand that the first time you talk to them after something happens, that it might be a little bit fuzzy, but still at the same time, given her past to defrauding people and, of course, finding out that she defrauded a bunch of people this time around, asking for GoFundMe money to a tune of $40,000, it looks to me like, once again, she decided to use this opportunity to scam people out of money, and most people are going to go ahead and believe this. They're going to go ahead and perceive that that right there is the case. Playing the race card, of course, is something that, quite frankly, doesn't really and truly surprise me that you did, given the rest of your Instagram when I looked, into, when I looked at it. The thing is this right here. You decided to take the side of somebody who was obviously not being fully honest on the situation, and now you're doubling down on it. Now, maybe it's possible you're doubling down because your audience may be a primarily black female audience, but of course, there's also a lot of black women out there, as I've shown you a few examples, who already knew that this was a lie from the start, did their own investigation, and they found out that this woman was, in fact, lying and they came to the conclusion that she was just a good old-fashioned scammer. So now you got egg all over your face. Congratulations, you're a moron. And with that right there being said, guys, once again, another race hoax exposed. We'll be talking a lot about that this year in the coming year, seeing as we're still January. And I'm still talking about the new year, even though we're three weeks in. Still, though, make sure you guys please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. Please hit the notifications bell. Cut all the notifications on. And please leave a comment in the comment section. Please tell me what you think of this. I'll see you guys later.